Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for attending the Bennington webinar tonight. I am Wallace Poon, consultant eye surgeon. I'm going to talk about cataract and how we can help you. A quick uh, introduction about myself. I uh, graduated from King's College uh, Hospital uh, for my medical training. Then I did my specialty training at the London and Southeast region. And then I did a Victory Retinal Fellowship at St. Thomas's Hospital London. And I was employed as a consultant Victory Retinal Surgeon at East Kent Hospitals University Foundation Trust. I specialized at eye trauma, retinal detachment, complicated cataract surgeries, and cataract surgery complications. Over the years, I've done over 12,000 cataract operations. And last year, I've done over a thousand cataract surgeries. I'm also an honorary lecturer uh, of the University of Kent, supervising uh, postgraduate students on uh, retinal research. And I'm also a UK examiner for the European Board of Ophthalmologists. Now, my dad recently had cataract surgery and we discussed a list of questions. I think it'll be really useful to share this with you. So this session will cover what is a cataract? What types of cataracts are there? What causes cataracts? Do I have cataracts and do I need surgery? What happens in the cataract clinic? What happens before, during, and what do I expect after cataract surgery? And what can go wrong with the operation? And where should I go? and which surgeon should be doing my operation. So what is the cataract? On the slide, you can see two diagrams. The right, which I think you can see my cursor here, is the frontal view of the eye. The left here is the cross section of the eyeball. What that means is you cut it into half. This is the front part of the eye. This is the back of the eye. The iris, which determines the color of the eye. You can see the pupil right in the middle, the lens that sits behind the pupil and the retina itself, and the optic nerve, which takes all the information to the brain. The eyes, as I said, works like a camera. The light travels into the eye through the pupil, focused by the lens, to the back of the eye, the retina, which is also like the film of the camera. The optic nerve then collects all the information, send it to the brain. That's what the camera does. What is cataract? Cataract means the lens loses transparency. The left diagram shows a very sharp image of the eagle you can see here. With the cataract in the right side of the diagram, the image is compromised. So what types of cataracts are there? The commonest type is nucleosclerosis. As you can see in the diagram here, the yellowish color in the lens which progressively get denser in the center. This is more common with the age-related aging changes of the lens. This is cortical lens opacity. As you can see there, there's white spokes on the superficial part of the cataract. This is posterior subcapsular cataract. If I can convince you, you have got the opacity here at the back of the lens. My cursor doesn't work very well. Yes, here we are now. You can see the opacity here and corresponds to at the back of the lens here. This is more obvious. You can see a dense opacity right at the center of the back of the lens. This is called posterior polar cataract. So what are the commonest cause of cataract? The most common is actually age-related. 
However, some patients are born with the congenital type, which the postpolar cataract is one of them. If you get hit very badly with a blunt trauma, you can also suffer from cataract as a result. It's also related to systemic disease, for example, if you're diabetes, and it can be drug related as well with patients taking steroid, either tablets or topical eye drops. So do I have cataracts then? Now there are certain symptoms which are common with cataract. For example, here, the color become faded, things become blurry, especially when they're driving at night, oncoming traffic light cause a lot of glare. Or you keep going to the optician thinking the glasses are not right, I need stronger and stronger glasses. That's because the cataract progressing, making you more short-sighted. Or the patient can have simply ghost vision or double vision and seeing multiple images because of the cataract causing uh, the diffraction when the light entering the eye. So do I have cataracts then? I think the best thing you do if you have that mentioned symptoms is go to see optometrists and they will refer you to their ophthalmologist for further investigations. Do I need cataract surgery? Well, there are clinical reasons which will benefit from cataract operations and it's definitely advisable. For example, the cataract is getting so bad, it increases the risk of having a certain type of glaucoma. Or you're having cataract, or you're having surgery on the retina and it will be worthwhile to actually have the cataract done at the same time. Or if you're diabetic, and because of the diabetes, you should have your regular fundal checkup or screening by the local diabetic screening service, and they were unable to get a good quality picture. So yes, for those situations, it would be advisable to have the cataract operation. Otherwise, only have it done if it's affecting your daily life. So what do you mean by that? For example, you're not able to see well enough to cope, to do your shopping, you are unable now to drive legally or you think it's safely and you keep changing your glasses or it stops you from doing your hobbies. You can't play sports anymore. You can't see the golf ball going miles away or it affects you painting. Now talking about painting, there's a story of a very famous painter, Claude Monet. He's a French impressionist died in 1926. He was actually diagnosed in 1912. However, 100 years ago, the technology is not as advanced. And there's 50-50% chance if you do a cataract op operation, you can actually lose your sight. So he really, really concerned and waited for over 11 years before he had surgery. Now, during this period of time, he started describing his garden as more yellowish a more murky and very red and dull. And the blue color becomes darker and very indistinct. And you can actually see from his paintings of 1899 of the Japanese fruit bridge, you can see the water lily there, very beautiful, vivid color. But when go to the year 1922, everything is very blurry and there's a heavy use of the red tone because he can't distinguish blue anymore. So, should he have cataract surgery? I think he should have it sooner rather than later at Bennington. Now, what happens in the cataract clinic once you get referred? Now, Bennington has a very streamlined, dedicated cataract pathway, which first of all, you will see the nurses. You will have your detailed medical and social history taken, blood pressure, check your visual acuity, check your intraocular pressure, and also we will do all the investigation necessary. So when you see the consultant, he will have everything in front of him to make decision and share the time with you to examine you, to discuss the investigation results. He will discuss with you the type of local anesthetics you will need and decision on the surgery and the risk of operation. Most importantly, he will talk to you about the type of lens implants and what the reflective outcome going to be. You will get the consent for the surgery. 
And he will also tell you at Bennington, after the operation, you will have 24 hours post-surgery hotline, which if you've got any concern, you can always call us. Now, the types of lens implants and refractive outcome is quite a difficult concept to understand because with my own experience at uh, talking to my dad. Roughly, you can think about two types of lenses. One is called the monofocal lenses. What that means is mono is one, so it's one point of focus. And is either good for distance vision, which is for your driving, watching television, or is only good for near vision. That means when you're doing your reading or you're doing your sewing, but not good for both. That means you will still need glasses. Now you might have heard about the concept called astigmatism. That means the surface of the cornea ideally should be like a football, nice and round. But a lot of people were born more like rugby ball. So it's more curved in one side than the other. This will not be corrected with the monofocal lenses. You will probably need glasses for both distance and near. This procedure is done by most ophthalmologists. Special lenses is different. Why is it different is the multifocal lenses is a bit like if you wear very focal glasses, it internalizes it. That will be able to provide good distance, intermediate and also near functional vision, most likely without the use of corrective lenses, that means glasses. However, special lenses can have problem with glare and also reduce contrast sensitivity. The special lenses will be able also to correct astigmatism. And the Bennington here is only performed by the ophthalmologist specialized in refractive surgery, which will be the correct people to look after you. Now, you can see from the left-hand side of the diagram for the monofocal lenses, nice and clear, but you need glasses for either distance or near. On the right-hand side diagram, you can see the concentric rings in the center. And this is the magic part, which allows you to see distance and or near to a certain extent, which will make you more likely to enjoy life without the glasses you're wearing. Now on the day of surgery, what's gonna happen? Once we decided we're having the operation done, you'll come in, you'll have your pupil dilated, the nurse will check your blood pressure, check your glucose and give you oral sedation if you need it. Now I would advise to wear comfortable dark color clothing. Don't drink alcohol on the day of surgery. I think you might want to numb yourself and sedate yourself, but don't. Have a very light meal or breakfast if you come in the morning. During the surgery, you'll be sitting in a comfortable operating chair. The chair will automatically lean backwards and will position your head until you are comfortable. We will then put low quinsetic drops and iodine drops to clean the area. And then we'll drape it, that means a plastic piece of uh, material to keep the operating area clean. Now that might be slightly claustrophobic, but we'll be able to lift it away from the face. It will insert a speculum, which is a device to keep your eyes open. You'll notice a bit of pressure around the eye, but it should not be painful. Then I will ask you to stare at the operating light, which has got the three bright dots in the middle. You'll have both eyes open and blink normally. There will be background music playing, very important, no singing, no dancing. Leave that with the nurse. Now the surgery takes around 10 to 15 minutes, okay? We go for a few things. We make a very small incision in the cornea. We peel off the superficial part of the capsule. And then you will hear some funny noises. That is the ultrasonic needle breaking the cataract into pieces, clearing it out. And we will do what we call irrigation and aspiration, just clear the rest of the capsule back. And then we can put a lens implant inside. Once we've done that, we're going to put intracameral antibiotics. That means a fancy name for putting the antibiotics inside the eyeball. Then we'll seal the wound and then we'll be covered with a transparent shield 
So we can still see through, but things will be blurry. And this is really important to remind you, you have an operation and don't rub your eye. These are some of the diagrams of the cataract surgery. As I mentioned here, capsule rexus is peeling off the very superficial part of the capsule, which the cataract sits. And that's how we get into it using an ultrasonic needle to break it. Once it's all clear, we put a lens implant inside the eye. So what should I expect after surgery? Now you are having an operation, so it will be a slight discomfort and might be a bit of pain, but should be managed with simple painkillers. If you have severe pain or something you think is not right, do not hesitate to call us. You'll be given the eye drops to prevent infection and to control the swelling in the eye. Several hours after the surgery, the local aesthetics wears off and you can start to feel your eye properly again. Now, as I mentioned earlier by this gentleman, he has got a transparent plastic shield to cover the eye. Really important, don't take it off the first night because you want to make sure you will not rub your eye because that will introduce infection. The whole healing process takes around four to six weeks. You will get better every day. However, any surgical intervention, things can go wrong. During the operation, around one in a hundred cases when we do the surgery, if I can see here, the capsule which is holding the cataract can split. That might take a bit longer to finish the surgery. So rather than 15 minutes, it might take half an hour. One in 150 cases, rather than just splitting the, the capsule, part of the cataract can drop to the back of the eye. In those cases, you need further operation to complete the surgery. Postoperatively, the most devastating complication is what we call anophthalmitis. It happened very rarely, one in 1,200 cases. It happened because when we do the surgery, we have to cut the eye open. So there's a chance that bacteria can get inside the eye during the surgery, but most commonly this actually happens following the operation. When the patient thinks I'm all right, they start rubbing the eye, getting dirty water into the eye before the wound is sealed and they cause infection. If that happened, we can still treat it, but the outcome might not be as favorable. And very rarely, one in 10,000 patients can go blind, lose the eye because of their infection. When we perform the surgery also, there's a chance you can have swelling in the eye. Cystoimacolidema is a specific term describing the swelling at the back of the retina. It happens around one to, two, one to 3% and the eye drops normally will settle it. The surface of the eye, the cornea can also be swollen around one in a hundred cases. And again, it will settle with time in most cases. After the cataract operation, five to 10% of patients, the capsule can become vacant. That will cause blurriness again, a bit like, oh, my cataract is coming back but it's actually not the cataract coming back, but the capsula become to thicken. That can be easily dealt with, with what we call YAG capsulotomy. It will be a machine, you sit there five minutes, you walk out, you see better by the evening. So the next question is, where should I go and who should be doing my cataract operation? Now at Bennington, we've got a dedicated eye department in a brand new 53 million facility. There's plenty of parking space for you, which is free. I know this doesn't sound like important, but it's actually really important. You want to be in a tranquil environment rather than driving around trying to get a, get a parking space when you're stressed out to have the operation done. At Bennington, we got the latest investigative tool and the surgical equipment and a team of 12 experienced eye consultants. Not to mention that we have got dedicated refractive ophthalmic surgeons if you want to decide to have your special lenses done. Now, why it's important at Bennington is I personally, I stopped doing my practice anywhere else now. It's because the lead clinician, the matron and the senior management team will work together very hard and create a special dedicated cataract pathway, which is streamlined for your convenience. So you come here once, 
listed for surgery and the next time you're coming for the operation rather than attending Bennington multiple times, which unfortunately with some other, other hospitals, this is what's going to happen. And also we got dedicated of farming nurse and administrative team to look after you. And also the 24 hours hotline post operatively, which will know you'll be looked after. So the message you take home with is, if you notice any of the symptoms of cataract, see your optometrist. Or you can speak to our team. You can get fast access to our 12 experienced eye consultants. If you want to special lenses, please mention to the team when you ring them up. As I said, we've got a streamlined service. And most importantly, you've got a 24 hour hotline following surgery. And we've got consulting cross covering each other. So even if one of us in holiday who did your operation, you'll be always well looked after. And importantly, ask your optometrist for a copy of your referral letter. Well, thank you everyone for listening. I think I'm going to hand this over to Jay now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ping. So I have got um, some questions I'm gonna ask you. So prepare yourself. Okay, so your first question. What is the criteria for cataract surgery? People talk about ripeness and size. Could this please be explained? Um, as I mentioned in the lecture, when do you need operation? For example, you don't have other clinical indications. You have it done when you think it's bothering you. If it's affecting your daily life, so have it done. I have got patients which got quite advanced cataract, but they said, no, I don't go out much. I just want to sit there. I'm not bothered and then don't have your operation. But if you're an active person, you play a lot of sports, you want to see clearly what you're doing. You're driving at night, you can't tolerate the glare. That is good enough indication for you to have your surgery. Lovely. So you Thank don't you. need to wait for it to be right. It's right when you think it's necessary. It's really your choice. Okay. So next question, I'm 62 and I have glaucoma for which I take two different eye drops. How does this affect my cataract operation? Um, with glaucoma, you do have a slightly high risk of having cataract surgeries. Depends on the type of glaucoma you had as well. It will not stop you from having cataract operation. As a matter of fact, if you have your cataract removed, your intraocular pressure will normally drop one or two millimeter mercury. So it's actually advisable. However, we will need to know how advanced your glaucoma is because if you've got very advanced glaucoma and there's a lot of damage to the optic nerve, having cataract operation sometimes can worsen your symptoms. So it really depends on how bad your glaucoma is, what type of glaucoma you have, but certainly if you've got glaucoma, you cannot have special lenses. And I think we will recommend monofocal lenses for you. Okay. Um, so the next question, I need to have cataract surgery, but I've been putting it off for some time as I'm so worried about having it done while I'm awake. Can the procedure be done under general anesthetic? Um, to be honest though, nowadays with cataract operation is such a um, mature and well-planned procedure now. 99% of the operations are done under local anesthetics, and the majority is only happy with eye drops. Some patients, we will, if they're very nervous, they cannot uh, keep their eye open, so we'll give them a local anesthetics to numb the eye. Normally, that's enough. There are certain patients, we will do it under general anesthetics. Number one, if you're very worried, uh, you think you cannot keep still, yes, by all means, have it done under general anesthetics or with the patients got Parkinson's, got head tremor, can't keep still, they need general anesthetics. However, at Bennington Hospital, we do not provide general anesthetic service. So only local anesthetics at Bennington. If you do think yourself, we need general anesthetics, it will be worthwhile for your optician to refer you to facilities, to facilities like the NHS, which they do do uh, uh, general anesthetics. Thank you. Okay, um, I have a retinal vein occlusion in my right eye. Am I still able to have the operation on both eyes? Uh, the answer is yes, because patients have retinal vein occlusion can still have very good outcome. 
Now that will again depends on the severity of your vein occlusion. I have got patients with vein occlusion, which the vein occlusion cause swelling at the back of the eye, and they're having active injection. I think you might have it about this intravein uh, intravitreal injections, which stem down the swelling. When the cataract got worse, we do the cataract, and at the same time they're still carrying on with the intravitreal injection to control their swelling, and they got fantastic outcome. Now, without knowing how bad your vein occlusion is, it's very difficult to tell. But generally speaking, vein occlusion does not stop you from having cataract operation. If anything, the cataract surgery should be able to maximize what you're able to see with that eye. Okay. Um, so the next um, person would like to know, I would like to have special corrective lenses during my cataract surgery. Would I feel these lenses like I feel contact lenses? No, you will not feel it because rather than the contact lenses, it sit on the surface of the cornea. So every time you blink or you get a grain of sand, you will feel the discomfort. Intraocular lens implants is inside the eye. You do not feel it. The most important thing is you do not need to renew it either. Once it's inside the eye, it stay there forever. Okay, and this is the final question, I think. Uh, so, hi, I'm thinking of booking an appointment. I am nervous about surgery and the risks that you mention. What is the success rate of cataract surgery at the hospital? Generally speaking, with cataract operation, they are very well monitored because all the surgeons have to submit their complication rate to the Royal College of Ophthalmology. At Bennington, we have got the electronic patient record. I think this is the only one in the country which hasn't got, which has got the electronic patient record. They will automatically collect the information and send it through directly to the Royal Colleges for comparison. Now, I mean, I'm the clinical lead there. The success rate or our complication rate, which is recognized by the Royal College of Ophthalmology is 1%. I think all my colleagues' complication rate is definitely less than 1% for posterior capsular rupture which is one of the benchmark. I mean, myself, my, uh, the last one I had was 250 cataracts ago. So um, that is what we, we look at. And my complication rates around 0.05%. We have got a couple more questions. Um, so what happens if the surgery doesn't work very effectively? Now that will depends on what caused it not working effectively. With cataract operation, statistically, not just at Bellingdon and any cataract surgery, 99% of people will see better. With that 1% doesn't see better, either there is coexisting pathology. For example, uh, the patient already got glaucoma, macular degeneration. No matter what we do with the cataract, their vision will not improve that much. Or the patient suffer from a complication. If there's a complication, the outcome might not be as good. But think about the bright side, not a lot of operation can guarantee 99% improvement. So majority of patients will see better with the cataract operation. Okay, and I have got another question here. So I know I have cataracts growing, but they are only affecting my vision very slightly. I'm 70 and I don't want to wait until I'm much older to have this surgery done with multifocal lenses. Would you still be able to do the operation? Yes, we'll be able to, but I think this is the most important thing is the patient need to understand the risk and benefit, okay? When you come to see the consultant, we'll go through the, the likely complication again. So you can actually decide on yourself the risk and benefit. This is most important from the patient's point of view. You know what you're getting yourself into, but what we're saying is you've got 90-90% chance you are going to see better. Now, special lens is different category because the consultant needs to choose with you what type of lenses best suited your needs. And I think it's that interaction is most valuable to making sure you will get the best out of the cataract operation. You don't need to wait until you're, well, the oldest patient I've operated on is 102. You do not need to wait that long. You have the operation done when you think you need it. 
Lovely. Thank you. Well, I think that is all the questions. I'm sorry if there are any questions that we didn't answer, but if you provided your name, we will do so after the event. So if you would like to book your consultation, please contact the number on the screen before 8 p.m. tonight or contact us between 8 to 6, Monday to Friday. We're offering attendees 50% off an initial appointment with the terms on the screen. You'll receive a short survey and I'd be grateful if you could spare a few minutes to let me have your feedback on today's webinar. Our next webinar is on the 2nd of August with consultant orthopaedic surgeons, Mr. William Dunnett and Mr. Matthew Oliver discussing hip and knee replacement surgery. So on behalf of Mr. Poon, myself and the team at Benenden Hospital, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. And we look forward to you joining us again for another webinar very soon. Thank you very much.